finally, we have uh, Dr. Farah Mateen, lead author of the late-breaking abstract titled Neurological Disorders in Iraqi Refugees, Data from the United Nations Refugee Assistance Information. Dr. Mateen's research is embargoed until 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Hawaiian time, tomorrow, Tuesday, April 12th. Thank you, and welcome to Dr. Mateen. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'd like to thank the uh, American Academy of Neurology for giving me the chance to present today. And uh, just off the bat, I don't have any uh, disclosures. Um, this is data from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, but I'm not affiliated with them directly. And uh, I'm funded by the American Academy of Neurology 2010 Practice Research Fellowship Grant, but they didn't have any specific role in this study. So the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees recognizes more than 40 million refugees in the world today, and there are currently more than 30 uh, active armed conflicts. And we know very little about neurological disease in humanitarian emergencies and in times of humanitarian crisis. Uh, the war in Iraq actually began more than eight years ago now, uh, March 20th, 2003, and the UNHCR recognizes more than 3.5 million persons of concern of Iraqi origin. And currently there are more than 2 million refugees uh, who live uh, outside of Iraq. The United States, uh, as well as uh, Western Europe, Australia, and Canada are major recipients of Iraqi refugees today and continue to be. So you, uh, Iraqi refugees often have to seek humanitarian assistance in the countries uh, where they um, flee to. And it's been found in, over recent years that uh, developing country paradigms for understanding neurological disorders and refugee situations have been inadequate. And so we previously knew uh, very little about neurological disease. It was limited to mortality outbreaks and involving meningococcal outbreaks and polio outbreaks, but very little was known about the more chronic disorders that refugees faced. So uh, the Refugee Assistance Information System, or RACE, is a pilot program run by the UNHCR, uh, which began January 1st, 2010 in the Kingdom of Jordan. Jordan has just over uh, 6 million people overall, and uh, it's estimated there are about 450,000 Iraqi refugees there right now. Uh, 36,953 are registered with UNHCR, and 7,642 are, are, are in receipt of humanitarian and health assistance. Um, so the objective of this study was to look specifically amongst those uh, people receiving health and humanitarian assistance, uh, what is their burden of neurological disorders, and what specifically are those disorders. <laughs> Uh, so we found that there were 1,295 refugees over the course of one year uh, who had neurological diagnoses. And RACE is a, a program involving more than 100 centers countrywide in Jordan with uh, more than uh, 25 partner organizations. Our most common neurological diagnoses in this group were uh, back pain, which was 378 individuals, headache 171, epilepsy 164, Nerve root and plexus disorders, 126. Cervical disc disorders, 93. Dizziness, 90. Uh, cerebrovascular, uh, listed as ICD. Other cerebrovascular disorders, 55. Interferotubal disc disease, migraine, and cerebral palsy follow that. In the whole data, data set, there are 70% of individuals from Baghdad. 78% were adults. The age range was less than one, so at the time of birth, to 103 years old. The total data set had a mean age of 37 years and 49% were male. Among neurological uh, people with neurological disorders, the mean age is slightly higher, 43 years old, 46% female, and a high number of disabled, 10%. Notably, the UN in general feels that 10% of the uh, world's population is disabled. And in this data set, that was true, 10% were disabled. Um, amongst people with neurological disorders, 4.97%, approximately 5% self-reported a history of torture. Uh, this compares to about 3.1% among people without, not, without neurological disease. So that's a relative risk of 1.47. Neurologists were involved with a very small fraction of all cases of neurological disease among Iraqi refugees, so 177 cases in total, which is about 14%, a very small number. Uh, following neurologists, neurosurgeons, and physical therapists, physical therapists and orthopedic surgeons were the next most involved medical specialists. Um, amongst the people uh, with neurological disorders, a total of 763 required medications, which is also a very high number. So some of the conclusions of this study are that uh, Iraqi refugees, I just want to emphasize how high some of the numbers are and how um, this is a large data set. It's the first of its kind. Um, but neurological disorders are um, highly prevalent in this population. 
So they account for, I think it's 17% of all people seeking humanitarian assistance in this study. Uh, this is a, uh, basically a marker of healthcare utilization. This is not a prevalent study. It's also not necessarily an assessment of healthcare needs, which we would assume would be much higher. This is healthcare utilization. Um, the strengths of the study are that it's an active a countrywide national surveillance system. Race is expected to expand throughout the Middle East and throughout Northern Africa as conflict continues in the region. So this is an initial goal for this system. But I'd want to recognize here that there's a potentially high burden of neurological disorders. This is a country of first asylum for many people. The existing studies out there have been from third country resettlement, have had very small numbers. And so there's a potentially a high need for neurological disease care for Iraqi refugees. It's a global problem, and it's a long-term problem as well. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. I didn't have a handout, but if you, um, I'll give you my email address. I can be happy to send you the poster. It's F as in Farah, Mateen at jhsph.edu or Johns Hopkins School of Public Health.edu. I'm happy to give it in writing, too. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Mateen.